Let's just be clear about what's going on. Sometimes it is necessary to pull back the curtain to reveal what's happening behind the scenes. There is a deliberate and growing attempt to smear and demonize and silence those who oppose the horror being currently inflicted on Gaza by the Israeli state. It is, in part, a sign of panic because the cheerleaders and apologists of this crime, you see, know that most of the general public do not take well to the atrocities currently unfolding on their screens and they know that the worst is to come. I'm sorry to say that. I don't say that kind of thing lightly, but it is the truth. Now, I'll show how this is happening and why, but first, here's how I discussed this earlier on on the Jamie Vine show. But look, I was at that demonstration. There was up to 300,000 people. It was one of the top 10 biggest demonstrations in the history of this country. And I walked and marched alongside Jewish protesters amongst, like myself, gay protesters. I can see you there in the... Uh... There I am. Um, and it was actually, it was London at its most diverse. And I'll just tell you what's happening here, just so everyone is aware. What's happened is most politicians and newspapers in this country have tied themselves to what is a war crime happening in Gaza, a massacre of innocent people, where you have thousands of innocent civilians, including children, being butchered en masse. And newspapers and politicians have conned onto the fact that actually most people in this country don't like innocent people being murdered, not least with the active support of our government. So with these Israel saying they're going to reduce their leading officials, Gaza, to a city of tents, with Israeli officials saying that they're going to annex parts of Gaza, if not all of it, with them openly demanding the mass expulsion of the Palestinian people from their homes and saying that not that targeting, uh, avoiding targeting children is secondary to all their other concerns. They're being open and honest about their intentions. What these newspapers and politicians are trying to do is turn the tables on the people who oppose the war crimes. They're trying to say the morally indecent people aren't the people cheering on mass murder on an industrial scale, so, the real morally indecent people are people who oppose slaughter. And what they've done is zoned I mean, in I mean, I, on I, a I, tiny handful of people I, I mean, I, I get, when there's 300,000 people, including Jews, Muslims, non-believers, people from all backgrounds, and it is cynical and people should see it for what it is. That's what's going on here. Let's be clear. Those who support the destruction of Gaza with all the mass resulting deaths know that they do not have a moral high ground. They know that the vast majority who oppose Israel's onslaught were, like them, disgusted by the atrocities committed by Hamas. The difference is we don't support collective punishment. We don't support the killing of far more Palestinian civilians, nor do we seek to erase the decades of occupation, siege, theft of land coupled with colonization in the form of illegal settlements, what's described as apartheid by human rights organizations, the incarceration without charge of Palestinians, including children, the killing of Palestinian civilians, Bear in mind, before the hideous atrocity committed by Hamas, in the last 15 years, 96% of civilians, according to the United Nations, were Palestinian. The civilians who were killed, that is, before October the 7th. Now, as well as the fact that human rights organisations document crimes such as forcible transfer and torture. Now, after the horror of October the 7th, there were many who were understandably rallied by a general sentiment of something must be done. We saw that same effect with Iraq, with Afghanistan, and with Libya. Before that sentiment collided brutally with the reality of what something must be done means to the sorts of people who, in response to horrors, preach only violence. Now, that sentiment, in this case, was always soft, partly because the British people have gone on this rodeo several times before. Now, for example, on the 13th of October, of those polled, 18% said that Israel does try to minimise harm to civilians, um, compared to 44% who said it does not try to minimise harm to civilians, many others saying don't know. Last Friday, a YouGov poll found that 58% of Britons think there definitely should be an immediate ceasefire in Israel and Palestine. 18% said probably should. So the total in support of an immediate ceasefire is about 76%, three, over three quarters of the British population. Just 5% said there probably should not. And 3% said there definitely should not. That 3% is the same figure as those who believe the earth is flat. That is not a joke. That is a fact. But that 3% flat earther position is the position 
of the Conservatives, of the Labour leadership, who support Israel's onslaught, and it is also the position of most newspapers in this country. They are completely at odds with public opinion, and that's before a ground invasion, which will inevitably result in the greatest fatalities. Again, I don't say this lightly. It's a horrible thing to have to say, predicting mass slaughter. But this is like watching a horror film where you know what the ending is. Now, today, The Sun's front page isn't about the mass slaughter of innocent people, collective punishment, the collapsing health service in Gaza, the disappearance of clean water. No, it's not, not about any of these things. It's about a tube driver who, on Saturday, with a tube train full of protesters on their way to a big march against this current onslaught, led a chant of free Palestine. Now, their front page was headlined, Unbelievable, Fury at tube drivers, anti-Israel chants over train tannoy. Nigel Farage called for him to be fired. Sounds a little bit like cancel culture to me. A clamp down on free speech. Now, they're trying to spin the idea that supporting a free Palestine is intimidating and even anti-Semitic. It is no such thing. That is a lie. It is an outright lie. Anti-Semitism is a genuine menace. It has meant 2,000 years of Jewish people being persecuted as Jews. And that culminated with in living memory in the Holocaust, supporting the right of the Palestinian people to be free of oppression, of an illegal occupation, let alone the horror being currently inflicted upon them, is not anti-Semitism. And it distracts attention from genuine anti-Semitism, which must be fought to say so. Now, similarly, the Mail's headline is Suella's fury at Met over Jihad chants. This is over a tiny group who chanted Jihad now, as the actor and TV presenter Adol Ray put it, jihad means struggle, a Muslim spiritual struggle to avoid sin and be a better human and avoid evil to do good. Therefore, tens of thousands were performing jihad in the peaceful protest. It can also have a war context. Let's not focus on one person at a fringe event. Even the Metropolitan Police came to that conclusion, hence the Home Secretary's fury. Now, without getting bogged down the semantics here, this was a tiny group and an absolutely massive protest. They are focusing on this tiny group to deflect from the massive, diverse protest, which included... Jewish activists who I marched alongside. Now, there are even growing calls for protests against this horror to be banned. As one Mail on Sunday columnist wrote, the right to protest must be safeguarded, but it's clear that over the last two weekends, London's Jewish community has felt directly intimidated by the Gaza demonstration. That's it now. The point's been made. There should be no further demos allowed for the foreseeable future. Now, as Aaron Keller, a Jewish peace activist I know, wrote in response, I marched yesterday with a Jewish bloc. And I couldn't have felt more welcome. I encourage fellow Jews to come and experience it for themselves. If nothing else, it's an object lesson in how the media weaponizes anti-Semitism to fearmonger and gaslight. Now, these demands to ban protests would be oh so convenient, wouldn't they? That as the atrocities grow, as the death toll mounts, those opposing what has been done with the active supports of our government would then be silenced. Now, here's another example. The former editor of the Jewish Chronicle wrote... I'm feeling pure rage at what's being allowed to happen on the streets of London. 100,000 people marching because they think Hamas didn't go far enough. 100,000 people who want rid of me and my fellow Jews and don't give me that bullshit about a peaceful march for Palestine. Outright outrageous. An outrageous, despicable lie. A truly appalling and disgusting smear. Notice, note by the way, how there was only a, t a tiny handful of arrests. Compare the number of arrests to the number of people who get arrested at the average football match per person. Now, what's particularly vicious is that that means it's directed in part the Jewish activists who marched. There is no evidence that the vast majority of people on that demonstration had any sympathy with Hamas's atrocities. I went up and down that protest looking at banner after banner, listening to chant after chant, and I did not hear anything, anything, even remotely, corresponding to that claim. This idea that they wanted to murder Jews. We're talking basically about genocidal sentiment. And I believe that this rhetoric is dangerous. Many of those marching are Muslims, understandable because they're watching the mass slaughter of fellow Muslims, and demonizing so many disproportionately Muslim protesters, as from my reading of that tweet, makes them out to be violent and genocidal anti-Jewish haters will only whip up further hatred against Muslims. And yes, there is an increase in anti-Semitism and Islamophobia at times like this, and we have to fight it. Jewish people must not be held responsible for what is going on now in Gaza. Equally, we have to fight this growing, I'm afraid, officially sanctioned prejudice against Muslims. 
Now, indeed, the successor of this individual, as editor at the Jewish Chronicle, Jake Wallace Simmons, wrote, We need to face reality. Much of Muslim culture is in the grip of a death cult that sacralizes bloodshed. Not all, but many Muslims are brainwashed by it. That's a big part of the problem. He then deleted it, went on TV and lied about what he wrote. This, I should say despite coming from Jewish Chronicle editors, is a view which so many, so many British Jews have absolutely no time for whatsoever. This bigotry is dangerous. It's playing with fire. It is transparent. Again, transparent what's going on here. Cheerleaders for this atrocity know their reputations are being splashed by the rivers of blood which are now flowing in the Gaza Strip. They may have heard that the IDF has declared the emphasis as on damage, not accuracy. That one Israeli official has declared Gaza will eventually turn into a city of tents, adding there will be no buildings. That hostages and civilian casualties will be secondary to destroying Hamas, as the economy minister Nir Bakarara told ABC News, even if it takes a year, he said. They may be familiar with Israel's former chief military advocate general, the country's former attorney general, who declared that to destroy Hamas, then you have to destroy Gaza, because everything in Gaza, almost every building there, is a stronghold of Hamas. That Israel is dropping leaflets on northern Gaza warning civilians who remain there they may be considered a partner in a terrorist organization self-evidently arguing that non-combatants may be considered fair game leaving aside the fact that southern Gaza is itself being bombed contrary to Israeli claims that it's a safe area and that many are unable to flee not least the injured and the infirm that is a public confession of further war crimes to come they must know the apologists for what is happening that Israel is guilty of a collective punishment by depriving innocent people of water food energy and medicine and they must know that there's an indiscriminate bombing of civilian areas going on, unless they are completely and utterly delusional. Also, the fact that the United Nations has warned of mass ethnic cleansing, denounced crimes against humanity, and even argued there was a risk of genocide against the Palestinian people. As this goes on, the more horror will grow, and the more people will get angry. They will look at an establishment which is complicit in all of these crimes, we, after all, arm Israel and have provided it with diplomatic cover throughout this gruesome episode, and they will be increasingly disgusted and appalled. So that establishment is just going to try and redirect fire at those who oppose this horror. They will try to argue that the real extremists, the real moral disgraces, aren't the ones who support the collective punishment, the mass death, the war crimes, the human rights abuses that Israel is objectively guilty of, but those who oppose these horrors. As they become more and more desperate, as public backlash becomes ever more intense, they will double down on this strategy. We must see it for what it is and take it on. This is a moment for absolute moral clarity. Those behind this, I firmly believe, will be damned by history, but we can't simply wait around for history's verdict. Every day, more and more people are going to die. They're going to be maimed, they're going to be traumatized, and they're going to suffer. And we must speak out louder, with more and more courage, more determination, never giving an inch, not one inch, in our opposition to war crimes, to the killing of Palestinian and Israeli civilians, our opposition to collective punishment, to siege, to apartheid, and in our support, unwavering support, for a just and lasting settlement that provides peace and security for Arabs and Jews in the Middle East alike. Free, free, Palestine. Please like and subscribe. Do keep the show on the road on patreon.com forward slash ownjoes84 and I'll speak to you in a bit.